can identify this uh, 470k ohm resistor and see 9 and 7, uh, 4 and 5 looks like the heater uh, with 2 over here and then 1 looks like the signal in. And looking at the tube, if I could focus, we see that 470k here, 9 and 7, we can see the uh, pilots coming off this lamp here, that's the uh, yellow and black, right? And there they are right there. So 7 and 9 is 230 volts uh, coming in. That's going to be the, the B plus or the, the positive. So that's the positive, that's the heater, and then the remaining one is the, uh, the signal that causes the deflection in the tube. So, yeah, let's take some voltage readings. We're going to fire this up and take some basic voltage readings here and make sure that all the voltages are coming to this. And short of that, we're going to test the tube out itself on the tube tester. I checked the pilot going to the tube. We're looking at about 6.2 volts AC, so it's a 6.3 volt uh, filament. So that seems okay for the voltage. Uh, whether the tube is, is actually, the filament's heating up, I have no idea. We'll get to that. I'm going to check the, uh, the B plus now. Seeing 185 volts, the uh, diagram says I should be seeing 230. Uh, looks a bit low. Uh, could be electrolytic capacitors pulling down this voltage right here. And this is, um, is it before the, uh, yeah, it's before the uh, resistor. So, so we definitely have low voltage coming off this red wire. Going to have to trace back to see what's going on here. We are seeing a glow from the tester. So we'll check for emission. And emission is looking good, so the tube is good. We're going to plug it back in the radio and see if we are getting a glow from there too. And and I did see that the filament was lighting up correctly now that I've removed uh, all this shroud. Take a look inside the tube. What I did notice is when I first turn the radio on, I do get uh, voltage until things start warming up. And once they start warming up, then you see this voltage drop. I'll, I'll demonstrate. So you can see it's sitting around 240 volts, which is correct for the expected voltage. And now as it heats up, we can watch the voltage drop down. And this is telling me that something is pulling excessive current in this radio. And my thinking is, is that whatever's pulling excessive current, you know, the product of this may in fact be stopping this tube from lighting up. There's just not enough uh, voltage in this circuit that's also feeding this one. This circuit feeds a lot of stuff and it's also feeding this and it's causing degradation and this is an artifact of that degradation. I bet that it has to do with, with one or more faulty capacitors in this unit. This is the electrolytic capacitor that comes up the other side. Believe it or not, the ESR itself was not too bad. You know, all things given. But I, I went on just, you know, just like a random hunting spree here. And I came across this one, uh, most notably due to its construction. You know, having just this white wax covering it, this ERD one that you could see right here. And when I hooked up the ESR meter, it's showing 44.8 ohms. No doubt there are some issues here. And I do it by brand, as most people do. And when you see a brand of capacitor that has failed like that, then you're looking at all of the capacitors of that brand as suspect, looking for things like burns like this, and say, wow, I, we may have some capacitor issues here. Uh, and then all of them need to be tested and subsequently pulled out and then tested with the, uh, with the, uh, with the 11, you know, the leak down tester and what have you to really get an idea. Let me see what this one is rated to. It's a 500 volt capacitor that's reading 44 ohms. So God only knows. Let's take a look at this 0.1 microfarad right next to it. I imagine that one will fare better as it's encased, probably polyester, or it could just be paper encased in plastic. Let's take a look at that one. Really big 0.1. You know, you figure that one is like enormous and it's 0.1. And that one, that one is reading 10.92. It's 500 ohm rated. So not good. Um, definitely some capacity issues, and you could see that these are the, uh, well, European style, obviously, and you can see that they're, they're wrapped and sealed in plastic. They're, they're see-through, these picofarad ones, just wrapped aluminum, and those, those are probably good, those, those wrapped ones. They're probably not bad, but, but these, uh, these, these, uh, dry chemical ones, these, these paper ones, they're probably, they're probably all bad, and, and there's probably excessive 
as it as it turns on and and the rectif what we see is rectifier heat up and then it starts uh pulling some current and it and starts pulling down because it's uh, voltage or current is going through things that it shouldn't because all these capacitors are failing even a quick check of this one here top side this is uh rated for uh looks like 125 volts and uh this one here is reading uh 6.5 uh, one uh, ohms equivalent series so another one this is garbage and again these are these are high voltage rated ones I can only imagine what type of voltage is actually going across them it might be interesting to see what type of voltage is going across them because I mean you know obviously there should be no voltage uh, but that's what they're rated to but if, if there is a, a significant amount of current flowing this is gonna cause some serious issues we're seeing a lot of these already First thing I'm noticing is right off this capacitor here, we're seeing 182. I wanted to, wanted to note that because if we're getting that right off the rectifier, that could explain the low B plus that we're getting. I'm going to have to look at the schematic and reevaluate that. We have another one uh, that's coming off there too that's also 220. So I'm going to say 182 and 220, 183 and 220, and now refer to the schematic. I'm going to shut this down and have a look. And the 220 is in fact supposed to be 270, so either something is uh, pulling it down there or uh, it's not delivering from the rectifier. You're going to have to start chopping back and see what the um, the voltage output is uh, disconnected from the rest of the circuit. Make sure that's okay. No sense of troubleshooting the rest of the radio if the output voltage itself is low. In order to get this measurement right, I'm going to have to no longer assume a line voltage but match it to the setting of 125 on the radio. I got it dialed into 124.8. We're seeing 68 point, or we'll say 70 watts. And now we'll take a measurement at the rectifier. I'm still seeing it pulled down even when I do the balanced voltage. I'm gonna pull the, um, the rectified voltages directly off this rectifier here, disconnect the entire rectified voltage off of this radio and retake measurements. And if I see the measurements clear up, then I'll know that it's the radio pulling it down. And if I see the measurements don't clear up, then I'll know the problem is <clears throat> in the transformer or right here, and then I'll start working backwards. I, I know the radio is pulling stuff down. I know this is evident, right? But this is extreme, so we're gonna stop and take a look. This should go without saying, but I'll mention it Again, if you're going to disconnect off the rectifier, the, the connection in which you should be disconnected should be off of the rectifier, right? You shouldn't be disconnecting the connection that the rectifier connects to, because then what you end up with is 250 volts of uh, DC with no load on it, just floating, waiting to touch ground or you or something else. That's really a bad idea. By disconnecting it right off the rectifier, Nothing on the radio has the high tension DC, and this is just sitting here as, as test points right here, and, and it's not going to short to anything. That's a smart thing to do. By accomplishing this, I've dropped the wattage down to 30, so it's half the load as before, and the AC is, is stable as, as would be expected. It's just AC. Um, it actually, the AC actually crept up a bit. Because it, the variac, the less load there is, I mean, it's 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 analog, it's not like digitally controlled. So the AC actually jumped up a couple of volts. The thing is, is that the 220 that I read before actually dropped to 216 on this rectifier. And I find this, I find this a little strange. I'm wondering if this rectifier is on the way out. And this might be the cause of this problem. And it may have been out because of excessive load. Now, everything else in the radio is operating. The, the lights are on, the, the, the heater is on, uh, everything obviously but the B+, plus, which is why there's there's no noise or anything. It doesn't tell you on the schematic what the uh, voltage is on the input, which, which I realize sounds kind of stupid. But what I'm saying is, as a result of going through this switch, this selector switch for the input voltage, doesn't say what the resulting voltage is going to the... Um, to the rectifier through this transformer. It's not it's not listed on the schematic itself. So it does make things a little bit difficult for me. So what I would like to do is move to a, a different voltage, change it on the variac and see if maybe I have a bad a bad winding in the transformer. I'm going to try that now. So I reconnected it and I found that swinging the input voltage with the setting at 110 
a couple of volts up and down in each direction is, is enough to have an effect, you know, on the output as such that I could see a, a difference and I could, I could get that up in and around um, like 245 if I wanted to. And that tells me that um, there's nothing wrong with this rectifier. If anything, th there's enough parasitic drag going on in the circuit that I think if I cleaned up a lot of this, um, then, then this would uh, clear itself up, this problem. Uh, it's something that I'm going to uh, redress with the, uh, with the uh, uh, capacitors. And that, that accounts for one of these two circuits. The other one I want to look at is uh, um, not the one that was uh, reading that low value, but there was another one that was reading in the 180s. I want to see what that value was and what's causing that. That's a different branch that comes off of here. And the second one in question is supposed to be 230 volts and it's reading 187. And that is significantly worse than the other one that was only about uh, 10 to 15 volts low. You know, I, I started with the other one because it was right off the rectifier, it was easier. That, that's a significant problem. And, and that's one that we're gonna have to uh, cut back and see where the, if, it, if it's feasible to do so, cut back and see where uh, that, that loss is appearing. You know, because essentially it's all coming from uh, the rectifier right? And it's branching out and, and it's meeting this uh, capacitor at some point as a dual capacitor. Uh, so they're not tied together in any way. They're just sharing that cap, the enclosure. But uh, why, why is it 187 when it should be 230? A lot of, a lot of crappy capacitors that, that are leaking to ground is why. And we could see in looking at the diagram up here, the circuit is, is riddled with disaster. Well, you see these 4700s that are that are tied to ground it's hard to look through the camera to see them but there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, um capacitors here in the circuit on the top end that are that are right tied to ground on the circuit so i'm sorry 2200 picofarad capacitors too we see an example right here this is coming off the same circuit all the way down here off of this tag, and we could see 4,700 picofarads, and that is straight to ground at C48. If there was any issue right there, you know, any any amount of DC flowing across there, that would be an issue. Now you'd say, well, that's not an electrolytic cap. That shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, well, um, I, I've seen issues with, with these fail, these wrapped capacitors, so they, they are a possibility. But I'm not, I'm not saying that that's definitely the case. There are other ones tied to ground that um, are these type that I've already pointed out have uh, issues. So we're going to have to start ripping them out. I think they should improve another nasty one up there. You know, it only takes one or two to ruin the whole bunch. Let's start ripping out some of the more terrible ones. And each of them is going to go on the capacitor or tester to see how much current is flowing and what voltage. I've replaced these two capacitors. Uh, there is no rhyme or reason to why I chose these two. These are just uh, two that I've tested early on, and um, I have these capacitors in stock, so I just slapped them in. Uh, these are going to be uh, thrown on the uh, Heathkit capacitor leak down tester, and we're going to take a look and, and see how they're doing. From the removal of these two capacitors alone, and by the way, it looks as though there's a, a big crack going across it. You can see that right there but just from the removal of these two capacitors we can see that um and this is with exactly 110 volts going in on 110 setting 220 on what's supposed to be 270 jumped 252 volts having changed those two capacitors and 180 which is supposed to be what i believe is 230 is now 209 volts. And that was just replacing these two, which I knew were terrible. And I know there are other ones that I've already read in this device that are terrible, but I've just replaced two. So I'm excited to see what'll happen if we replace more, but I gotta test these out. 